Good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Welcome to the recess meeting of the Burke County Board of Commissioners for Thursday, May 27, 2021 at 2 p.m. We will note that Commissioner Taylor and Mulwee have not yet appeared, and other commissioners are present, with the manager, finance officer, and Madam Clerk. We ask you to check your mobile devices, be sure everything is on silent to, so that we don't get buzzed while we're uh, talking. Let me remind you to be sure the microphone is on when you come to the podium. Red light should be on when you're speaking. <coughs> this time, uh, gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Wayne. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All of us, Madam Clerk. All right. Item number three on the agenda is uh, items for discussion. General services. Uh, this comes uh, reconsideration of a recommended budget from Mark Delahunt, our general services director. Mark, afternoon. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I had uh, requested a uh, uh, off-road dump truck in, in the budget. Apparently, it was uh, actually part of a recommendation last budget with uh, along with a, a dozer and the dozer was purchased and the uh, large um, dump truck was not and uh, the, the dozer that you've already purchased has helped a lot in many different ways as part of their CND landfill operations but we are still in need of the large off-road dump truck we're currently using a piece of equipment called a pan which I include a picture of that piece of equipment in the with you and uh, to move the dirt with. And uh, there's a, a mat looking somewhat like this on your, uh, on your table up there. And this here shows the route that in black that the uh, pan must take because it's not an off-road vehicle to get the dirt from here. Our goal is to get the dirt from this point over to this point and uh, the pan has to take this route here, and it, the pan will only take eight tons of dirt at a load, whereas the off-road dump truck is uh, suited to take this route here, and it'll haul 30 tons. Uh, this route that the pan has to take is 0.63 miles round trip. The uh, route that this off-road dump truck could take is only a quarter mile round trip. So you're not only moving a lot more dirt, you're able to do it in a lot quicker time. Um, and uh, Just like the dozer, the off-road dump truck could be used in several different ways. Uh, one, one way would be cleaning out the ponds, which I have those circled on the map. They're sediment ponds out there and they have to be cleaned out as part of our permit. And uh, this was done two years ago and at that time we, we needed that dump truck to do it with and we had to rent it uh, two years ago and it's uh, due to be cleaned out again. And uh, we looked into if we had to rent that piece of equipment, it would take about three months to clean those ponds out, and that cost would be $26,500 if we had to rent it. And uh, finally, I just wanted to say that uh, I realize you all have a lot of uh, difficult decisions to make, along with finance director and county manager, and uh, I, I'm here before you just uh, asking you to do what you can, and if you're not able to do it, I certainly understand that staff will continue to do the best we can with what we have to work with. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Uh, Mark, how, when did we purchase the pan? Excuse me? When did we purchase the pan? The pan? Uh, how old let's is see, it? I got some information somewhere on its age. I, I, it's, it's, it's pretty old. I, I don't know. I wasn't here. Can't have been here two months. I don't, I don't know. think I was either. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but they're going to give us $60,000 for it. My understanding that right now the pan's condition it's requiring a $24,000 repair. If we don't get the dump truck, it's going to need that. Well, that was my next question. Do we have any idea what we're spending on it each year for repairs? I, I do not, but I know as it stands now to continue to use it in the fashion we're using, it's uh, due for a $24,000 repair. Okay, let me hold you up right there. Margaret, you got any numbers on that? No, sir, I don't know anything about a repair being needed. I hadn't heard that before. Can you tell me what the, you calling it a pan, but I don't know what that means. I had a picture. A in vehicle, there. can yeah. you tell me yeah. year and such? Uh-huh. Well, I know, but I haven't bought, like, Volvo this and GMC that. It's 
So Mark is the request basically to, uh, I, I think I've, I've got the message now, we're going to get rid of the pan for the dump truck. Yeah, the uh, person we're buying the dump truck from said they'll give us $60,000 for it as is, as a trade-in, which would bring the uh, equipment purchase down to $306,000. And, and at that, there are some financing options also included in your information I provided. What are the financing options? Um, there's a four-year option, and that uh, cost would be uh, over a period of $84,559.79 per year, or a five-year option, which would be $68,261.26 per year. This uh, piece of equipment also comes with a uh, five-year warranty and a five-year service plan of, of performing maintenance. In other words, we wouldn't have to live, land a finger on it. So one of the major advantages of, of the dump truck is that we could take it off-site if we needed to take it off-site. No, it's an off-road dump truck. It'd be used exclusively at the landfill in order to be... we could take it off-site if we needed if to. We could trailer it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's faster, holds more tonnage? More tonnage. Over three times the much tonnage. So our people are doing all this work yeah, yeah, that pan was not ex designed for what it's being used for at all. Do we have uh, any other need for a pan, really? No, I did ask that question, I, and he said, no, if we had that dump truck, we wouldn't be using it. It'd be pa parked. So it just makes sense to use it as a trade-in. Other questions for Mark? What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Britton. Yes, ma'am. Um, there would not be funds in the uh, solid waste budget for this, so if you would like to add it, I just want you to be aware it would be added as general fund would have to fund that. We would pay for it uh, through general fund dollars. And how would you best recommend, uh, Margaret, if we were going to buy it, how to buy it? I would not recommend the financing. We'll just use general fund fund balance in order to pay. And as far as the trading goes, there are very specific rules about that, and we would not consider that in the price. We would need to budget the full amount. Uh, this lease arrangement, I'm just kind of quickly looking at it here. Uh, what's the, is there finance cost involved in that? I'm sure there probably is, but I can't see them. Can you tell, Margaret? Can you look I, yeah, it is. I. I uh, added those up times four and times five. Yeah, you know, it would uh, over over that period it cost us a little more than that. Okay. Looks like the five years about forty thousand uh, dollars, give or take. And um, I don't have the amounts on the four year. If you can give me that again. Uh, yeah, over four years, each year's payment would be eighty four thousand five hundred fifty nine dollars and seventy nine cents. That would be approximately thirty-eight thousand. Okay, I don't think we'd want to do that either. Um, then, uh, so there's. Uh, we just have to go through the state process for the trade-in market. Is that what you're saying? You uh, have to bid it with the trade-in. Everyone has to be willing to take the trade-in as part of the bid process it becomes a better choice to purchase the piece and sell fixed asset, just surplus and sell the other piece. It, it can be a challenge to bid it and get three bidders to be interested in taking the trade in because you're still required to have the bids be uh, comparable. So we would not recommend doing the trade in, we would recommend selling the piece and as a, as a surplus piece of fixed assets. So even if we took bids, you're thinking we wouldn't get a trade-in value of... I'm not certain of that, so I can't count on it. I think we would have to, uh, in my recommendation, you would have to bid, budget the full expense um, of it. But that wouldn't preclude us from still bidding the... the we could higher. try bidding it with the trade-in, and if it didn't work, then we would drop back to the other option. Thank you, Margaret. Margaret, did we go up on the solid waste fee so I don't have to flip through this book? 
Yes, sir, approximately five and a half percent. And what did we gain from that? Five and a half percent uh, extra in fees? Uh, approximately, uh, I want to say $100,000. Um, we are still having to use fund balance to be able to do the uh, expenses that we are in the fund. They, and we use the maximum amount we can from their fund balance. So we're still not breaking even. Is that what you, what you told me? That's correct. Okay. In terms of personnel time, Mark, um, are they, what would these folks be doing if, if they weren't moving dirt? Oh, they got plenty to do. And, and this dump truck, like I said, just like the dozers used many different ways, we got piles and piles of uh, mulch out there and brush and uh, it, this piece of equipment really helped a lot on getting them caught up in the stuff they're already getting behind on. Okay. So the operators that operate the pan can operate this oh, vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I'm, I'm inclined to, to, to move forward with this. Jeff, I probably shouldn't move forward. Uh, it's all right with you all, but I just want you to. Know I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. You're a commissioner, and you have a, you know, you represent everybody in this county. I think you ought to go right. ahead and vote. I'm in, I'm inclined, Mr. Chairman, to move forward with it too. Okay. Likewise. Okay. All right. Let's let's add this item to the budget, then, Mr. Manager, Mark. Hey, Mark. Thank you. Thank you all for the opportunity to come and share some uh, thoughts with you and uh, requests that we have. Uh, apologize for being so many, but I, I think it is important for you uh, to realize our needs and, and make a decision based on having all available information. Um, item one is uh, a request that you do fund Smith, Rogers, and Aldridge legal services. Um, I'm not going to read all of this, but I can just tell you that uh, that's probably one of the best uh, monies that we've ever spent. Um, they have helped us tremendously since September. Uh, 2020. They answer all, any question that we've had. Uh, they're very quick uh, in an emergency situation. Any officer can reach out to them at phone 24-7, 365 days, and get an answer immediately if it's an emergency. Many times when we ask questions, they will respond back within an hour. Having, uh, they just added uh, John Aldridge, who is the premier um, consultant in firearms uh, throughout North Carolina. And he has been such a help. Uh, at the very end, I say any officer can call Smith and Rogers 24/7, 35 days a year. We can receive immediate legal opinions, like I shared. But one of the things that was ironic. I was going to the Western Sheriff Association meeting last week and talking to the sheriffs uh, there that that have it. And and I quoted uh, one of our fellow sheriffs here. He said, "I don't see how any sheriff's office can operate without Smith, Rogers, and Aldridge." And I, we just highly recommend continuing this contract for $25,000. Do you want me to go through everything, uh, Chair, Mr. Yeah, Chair? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item is um, program supplies. This is new to us, and, and I think uh, Margaret has done a wonderful job with the budget, and she's changed things. So in program supplies, that's relatively new, so we're trying to get our Mine's wrapped around it, and there's 41 items in there. But a few of those we did think was important enough to bring back to you and ask would you uh, consider funding uh, those items. And if you drop down to item six, Taser Axon, um, 
That requires that each officer that is assigned a taser fire two training cartridges per year. Um, for office, that would total 224 cartridges. That's a total of $6,075. Uh, we requested a ballistic uh, protection equipment for our canine deputies. Uh, this would be a, a protective vest and helmet that the deputies could quickly put on uh, before beginning a track uh, for a wanted fugitive. Total cost of that is $4,500. And I think everybody's very familiar with the recent events having shown the benefit of the ballistic protection for officers involved in these dangerous rapidly developing situation an officer in Watauga County uh, was quite possibly life was saved by wearing a ballistic vest on May 5th, 2021 when two deputies were murdered across the country. And there have been numerous instances where officers took rounds to the head and were saved by the helmets. Uh, we had an officer here killed um, with uh, tracking a dog when the canine officers are tracking they're, uh, they're trying to pay attention to what's going on, but obviously a lot of their uh, interest is on the dog, watching the dog. So we feel like that would be uh, an item that uh, we could safely let our officers track these uh, dangerous people that we're having to do. Number eight is a request for rescue swimmer vests for our SWAT members. Uh, we've got two lakes, two major uh, rivers, and multiple streams, and SWAT members... Uh, are subject to and have been called uh, to conduct water operations that require wearing their full ballistic protection equipment. In the event that a member was swept into the water while wearing this heavy, cumbersome equipment, it would be nearly impossible for them to stay on the surface or remove the equipment underwater in order to surface without drowning. Total cost for those needs are uh, $3,110. Uh, I note here in October of 2019, we were on a SWAT team being called out Johns River. Uh, we had an armed suspect who shot a female and was on a boat in the river uh, off of 18 North. The SWAT members approached the suspect uh, by means of a small rubber boat and after boarding the suspect's boat, picked him up uh, or placed him in custody. During that event, a SWAT member almost fell into the water uh, getting to that uh, boat and of course that would have uh, probably resulted in tragic consequences. Um, I don't see us getting any less calls like this in the future, and SWAT members are all going above and beyond already. We're just trying to protect them as much as we could. Number nine, we're requesting four replacement uh, heavy entry vest for SWAT. This would be a start of replacement, as you're aware, of the vests do expire over time. And so we wanted to start replacing these vests that are expiring. The total cost for that would be $14,000. Ten, we're requesting a replacement cycle to hire uh, for bulletproof vests. That's, again, for new, new hires and to replace the bulletproof vests that, I, that all of our deputies uh, wear. Number 11, uh, we originally requested 10 new patrol rifles and 10 new patrol shotguns. Again, this is just a replacement cycle that we want to get on in, in light of uh, all the requests that you have, and, and I know they're an overwhelming number. Uh, if we could scale that back and just replace five rifles and five shotguns this coming fiscal year, but we really need to get on the replacement cycle for those. Um, as previously mentioned in these items 6 through 11 listed, uh, the above will mitigate civil liability and protect officers. Uh, the total cost for all these items is 46570 That only leaves a balance of uh, $3,430 to address all the other items in the program supply line. So we were just asking that you increase that uh, from the recommended 50,000 to 58,000. That would leave us $11,430 for all those other items in that program supply line. Uh, item number three, uh, this is something that uh, th there could be funding and, and other sources for this, but we don't know if that's a given. We've been asking for body cameras for a long time, uh, but this is a program, Taser Exxon Core Plus plan, that first, uh, you see an FY21-22 budget request was to purchase a Taser program known as Core Plus. Uh, it would supply 100 new model number seven tasers, all associated training and duty cartridges, 100 Exxon body cameras, unlimited storage, 
data storage from the cameras, a clear chain of custody that would preserve, uh, preserve vital evidence, allow a code to be provided for the district attorney and the defense attorney's offices to go straight into the program database itself, leaving us completely out of it. Now we have to stop, find this information, record it, send it to them. Um, and if this program was funded, Taser Axon will support the purchased units, the repair, replacement of both of all tasers and cameras that they uh, provide without any cost. Um, about half of the working tasers that we have at the uh, Sheriff's Office are the older X-22 models. These units have been reliable, but Taser has stopped producing batteries for them. Uh, we, uh, when our limited supplies of batteries are exhausted, then those units will have to be surplus. Quite frankly, we don't know how long those will last, uh, but uh, once they're, the batteries are gone, we, they cannot be replaced. So we're, we would like to get the new Tasers uh, and get this program when we get the Tasers and the body cameras. We've uh, used the North Carolina Governor's Crime Commission over the last three years to secure the new tasers, um, and we've not been able to do that this year because we're going to use that uh, Governor's Crime Commission to fund something that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, these units were filled and almost immediately began to have issues that we had uh, the Taser X26P, uh, the LCD screens were becoming inoperable, making it impossible to read battery strength or onboard faults in the units. Taser's answer to that problem was for us to buy new tasers. Uh, so that's the reason for this request. Taser 7 is the newest offering. Uh, the new model will replace both the X26 and the X26P version. Uh, it would take in excess of $200,000 to simply replace the current tasers and buy training and duty cartridges. Um, that would solve the taser issue, but the office would still have um, not any body cameras that we've been uh, desiring to have for a number of years. Uh, the requested funding for that program is, is significant, $1,018,395, or they will finance over a five-year period at $203,679 per year. Item four is part of the Governor's Crime Commission grant process that I just mentioned uh, in the previous request. Uh, we have applied for money to purchase 20 sets of civil unrest gear for deputies. Civil unrest is growing throughout the country, and the Burke County Sheriff's Office assisted Morgan Department of Public Safety with an incident last year that we all remember on the square. The uh, Sheriff's Office is part of a regional mutual aid system made up of the 100 sheriff's offices who will assist each other in the event that civil unrest occurs within the region. We came to the conclusion last year uh, all the sheriffs that we, we're going to have to prepare for civil unrest is something that we got to live with, we got to be ready for. So that was the our answer is to create regional teams where everybody's trained alike, everybody tries to get similar equipment, and so we're going to use uh, this Governor's Crime Commission to purchase equipment to be ready to do our part of the 100 sheriffs in, in the county. Uh, we had requested a, a trailer to store, transport, and organize the civil unrest gear applied for in that grant. The uh, request has not been included in the recommended budget. Any type of civil unrest events tend to be fast developing and a drain on resources and manpower. Having a trailer to store, protect, and organize vital equipment is a component of a successful program. The equipment that we intend to purchase through the Governor's Crime Commission grant includes bulky items such as shields, body armor, batons, and gas masks. We also need the ability to contain and transport quantities of 40 millimeter gas munitions and the guns used to project those rounds. Individual deputies simply cannot, uh, doesn't have the means to store, transport, and safeguard this type of equipment. Uh, we, we realize we need to have one location uh, to store all of that. <coughs> Another key consideration is that this trailer would remain ready to go. It would be simply a matter of hooking up a vehicle to the trailer and proceeding wherever the civil unrest is occurring. We also used the equipment and trailer to respond to incidents within our jail. Uh, last night, uh, as you're probably aware, we had an incident where uh, we had some serious uh, concerns about having to um, evacuate the jail. Uh, if we'd had a problem and those doors, rather than keeping people locked, had opened up uh, automatically and we had uh, all of those people out uh, in that jail, 
uh, we could have a, a very serious issue um, and we would have this equipment that we could use in a situation where we have civil unrest in the jail. So we would respectfully request that the trailer with the cost of 20, excuse me, $6,200 be reevaluated and funds be enabled us uh, to safely protect our citizens and our property. The last item uh, is the jail uh, request. Uh, utilities, uh, $167,500 was requested. Uh, $150,000 was recommended, and of course that's a $17,500 shortfall. And our requested amount was based on the billings received to date, and we can only anticipate those billings will either be staying the same or increasing. Uh, so we would request the original request of $167,500 uh, to be able to pay for the utilities next fiscal year. Number two, uh, maintenance and repair, building and growth. 160585 requested versus $75,000 recommended, $85,385 shortfall. Um, the shortfall is explained by the disapproval of our request for parking lot fencing, padded cell repairs, and decontamination of cell cost. We're requesting that the padded cell repairs be approved as damage to these three cells cannot be prevented and repairs must be made to restore the integrity of those cells. We're also requesting that the decontamination of cells costs be approved. Recently, Sheriff's Office had to pay uh, $4,500 uh, to decontaminate one of our vehicles. We had arrested somebody who had fentanyl uh, on him. He put the fentanyl down into the back seat and one of the bags burst open. Uh, there's only a few people that do that uh, and it costs $4,500 to decontaminate that car. As much as we try not to have, get drugs into the system uh, or to the jail, occasionally they do get them in there and you can only imagine the cost of uh, what happens if we get fentanyl in the jail uh, and have to decontaminate uh, a few uh, sales or maybe a whole pod. Uh, the approval of these two items would increase the county manager's recommended figure by $33,500 for a total recommended figure of $108,500. Uh, communication wireless system, uh, we had requested $5,600 uh, versus uh, 4055 uh, that was recommended uh, of leaving a $1,540 shortfall. Our requested amount was based on billings received to date. Uh, we cannot reduce that cost without counseling three of our cell phones. Those cell phones are used by supervisors and on-call employees for maintenance and transport and, and situations like we had last night. Uh, for safety, emergency, and efficient, we should not reduce the number of cell phones and request that our original request of $5,600 uh, be recommended. Uh, staff travel, number four, uh, we request $11,800. Uh, was recommended $3,700. Uh, $3,500 of this shortfall was requested to send five uh, attendees to the annual North Carolina Jail Administrators Conference in an effort to recruit, retain, and offer opportunities to further professionalize our jail staff. We request this cost be approved. Jail courses and training opportunities for detention staff are already significantly limited, and this training is an effort to improve their opportunities. Approval will increase the county manager's recommended figure by $3,500 for a total recommended figure of 10800 Program supplies, uh, we requested $116,410, uh, $75,000 rep was recommended. Uh, this $99,900 shortfall uh, was to request the purchase of 10 uh, radios that we use in the jail. Um, these are required as a part of our process for maintaining safety and security in the building, staff and inmates. Uh, approval of these items would increase the county manager's recommended figure from 9900 9, for a total recommended figure of 84900 Also in equipment-wise, uh, under number six, um, we had requested $191,000 in equipment. Uh, no funds were recommended. Um, 
13,500 of this shortfall was requesting the purchase of two uh, APX 8,000 radios. Uh, that will be for uh, only form of our communications with the outside from the jail in the instance of the phones, internet, outage that we've experienced multiple times, including uh, an outage uh, Monday, the 24th of May, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. when a fiber cable was accidentally cut somewhere in Morton. Of course, as recently as last night, we experienced a significant dangerous situation uh, with not having adequate, adequate communication from the inside of the jail to the outside. Uh, with these two radios placed in the control room and booking locations, we would at least be able to communicate with fire, EMS, and other outside the jail uh, directly. Approval of this item would increase the county manager recommended figure about $13,500. Uh, then number seven, salaries full time. Uh, we had a $61,820 shortfall. We were requesting the approval of the additional lieutenant's position that uh, we appreciate you giving us the ability to do that uh, in this physical year. If you turn the page, you'll see the justification. Um, we will provide the jail with full-time uh, training. This lieutenant, if you continue it, it'll provide the jail with a full-time training coordinator certified as a training general instructor and OC spray instructor. It allows for quicker training of staff, alleviating the training workload of shift sergeants and corporals. It provides another lieutenant for on-call rotation schedule for current jail staff. It worked wonderful last night. We had two lieutenants stay until we got the situation under control uh, there. It provides the jail with another sworn officer who will have the ability to assist with serving papers on current inmates, performing local transportation of inmates and other duties requiring, requiring a sworn officer. Uh, Lieutenant Massey's currently in this position and has been so since February 15, 2021, um, as again approved by you in the remainder of 2021 fiscal year. Uh, during that time, he's uh, reorganized the supply room, transported inmates, served warrants on current inmates, sometimes to include fingerprinting them, commenced training initiative, including actions to be taken by the officers in the event of a fire alarm and uh, being triggered, and daily training of newly hired detention officers. And then I close in light of the difficulty in hiring and retaining detention staff, the significant assistance this position has brought to our jail and currently with 15 vacancies and our efforts in filling the vacancies, we ask that this position not be cut from the jail staff. I'll answer any questions that are coming. All right, thank you, Chair. Okay, guys, let's go back to uh, uh, take these one by one if we can. Uh, any discussion on uh, the uh, first item, which included a number of things? Sheriff, this item number one is uh, all related to the legal service, is that correct? Yes, every bit of that is, we're just justifying the uh, request for this $25,000 in legal services and trying just to share some of the things that we've already used it for. It has been a godsend. One of the things I'll tell you that, uh, number eight, questions concerning the Freedom of Information Act that saved days of securing, copying hundreds, if not thousands of uh, records. Ironically, this was the day uh, that uh, one of the attorneys came up to introduce us to the program, uh, and we asked him about a request that we had just gotten along with every other sheriff. He told us exactly who the person was. He told us what the request was. He provided us with a letter to send to the requester. He said, you will get a letter that states X. Here's a second letter that you send uh, to that person. Uh, and it just fell right in line. We had to provide no records, and we we were assuming that we'd spend at least a week getting these records. So, in our minds, he he paid for himself that day, the very first day 
that uh, they came up explaining the program. Okay. Any thoughts on this, Adam? All right, let's go to item number two. Uh, this item, several items here. Sheriff, uh, kind of in, in along the same lines of number three. Uh, well, item number three, I guess, is mainly new tasers. Is that, that the way I should interpret that? Uh, yeah, and it may be helpful to understand that if you just eliminate item number three, we still have the taser program. Uh, that we, we're struggling. We're going to have to do something to replace these tasers that are becoming obsolete. So we wanted to give you that information on the cost, uh, uh, number six, uh, for purchasing tasers and the cartridges. Another thing, if you, if you buy the program that's listed in number three, all the taser training cartridges, we have to use two per officer, uh, is free. Uh, and there's just no cost. Once you purchase that program, you're, you're done. Now, it's different, and we tried to show you what the cost would be if we just replace our tasers uh, in item two, number six, uh, what the cost will be. All right, I guess the, the couple things that I would like to, to, to speak to is item six. Uh, seems like uh, that's an item that we, we need to, to deal with. Uh, imagine you have required taser training on an annual basis of some Yes, and, and one of the things, and it's not in here, but it's important to know, is if you do not follow a taser's recommended training program, they will not back you in court. If you do follow their training program and somebody sues you to use of taser, they will come uh, and testify with you <coughs> if you follow their protocol. Then item number seven, that's pretty much uh, canine protection. Is that, am I reading all that correct? Yes, it's really just for the canine officers when they get out, uh, especially, we've thought about this for some time, but with the two Watauga County deputies being murdered and then the guy actually pulling one of them out and was shot in his helmet, then uh, obviously it probably saved his life. Uh, we, we've been concerned about this for a while, but many times when you're tracking somebody, you're going through bushes and, and thickets so you can't see in front of you. And the officer that we had killed in uh, 2014 when, when he was tracking one, uh, the guy was just waiting on him. He was laying down, he had, he had a gun laying across a limb, and as soon as the officer went under a tree limb, he shot him. Uh, that's what the canine officers, they're very vulnerable, so we would just like to have this safety equipment for them. So this, this equipment is for the officers? Just for the officers, yes. What, what are requirements for the vests just wear out because you put them on and off and wear them all the time, or are there any kind of uh, specified expiration and I'll let anybody dates? Anybody here that wants to? Five years. The vests are warranted for five years. They say that you should replace them with all the, uh, the elements of sweating, the moisture breaks down, the kids are supposed to, that's what they say. They're mainly for five years. And then after that, they, they, they say they're out of them. I think, uh, gentlemen, I, I'd like to suggest we we perhaps fund items six, seven, eight, and maybe half of nine and ten. I'd be glad to hear any other thoughts. Sure. Uh, on the jail positions and vacancies, is that money put away someplace uh, for the, for that in case we hire, or what, how does that work? Uh, and Barbara, I mean, Barbara can help me. With I mean, I mean is that like in a in a fund or something in case we hire or how, how does that work 
No, sir. Currently, it's being used to this year to fund the increases that were approved in March. Those vacant positions were able to fund that. They've had a significant overage in overtime that we're having to fund from the fact that they had vacant positions, so they're using more overtime uh, in a significant manner this year that wasn't expected. And the also, we also funded the uh, HR specialist to help them recruit for this March to June year. So but at, at any point, it's not set aside and kept from year, fiscal year to fiscal year. So it looks like it's going to continue because, I mean, how many years it, you went without a full staff? I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So we, we can just look at those 15 vacancies and say, you know, but I, I didn't know if that money went into a special pot for the sheriff's department or, or what. But uh, you know, that, if if it went into a special pot, that would help fund some of these things that they need. No, sir. And with your permission, uh, Chairman, I would explain within the program supplies funds, we don't tick a list and say which ones are eligible and not. We provide an amount of funds. Right and they choose which items within there they want to purchase. So if, if we funded some, some of the things that are on, on, this, uh, on these pages here, that, that would come out of that money though that sort of, I wanna say put away or whatever for the Sheriff's Department. There's rarely leftover when you're using it for the overtime and other things. There's, there's not, um, so we're saying that this is, all this would be new money then? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And within the 50000 that they're approved, these things, some of them could be purchased with that. We haven't denied these specific items. And I think for clarification, what we did is went through that, realizing what we thought we were going to spend. We think that what we brought before you is items that's really needed. So when we added those items with what we think we're going to spend, we were about eight thousand dollars short. So we were just asking for eight thousand additional monies in above what the manager uh, recommended. Um, so, so, so Steve, in other words, the, everything on this thing, you're just asking for eight thousand more. Yeah. Well, what we did is we went through it and we just cut it as, as, to the bone. And uh, the finance person, or Captain Robson, he, he says, I, I just don't think that we can do these things that we listed for you this morning or this afternoon if we don't have an additional $8,000 in that fund. Well, if it's $8,000, I personally, not before that, I mean, that's, what, when you read this, it sort of scares you to death. I mean, it scares you to death that money's in here, but if you're talking about $8,000, I don't have such a heartburn with that. When we say eight thousand dollars, is that for items nine and ten combined? Yeah. Well, that's where I think I'm confused at this point, uh, Sheriff. Um, up at the top in number two, you, you, the request was one hundred thirty thousand six so four. The recommended budget was fifty thousand. Uh, but when you start adding all these items up, that's a lot more than eight thousand uh, dollars. That's not the way I read it. So help me out. Yeah, I agree. When you read this, uh, you know. And I wish Jeff was here. He's he's not available. Let me look at something right here. I mean, if eight thousand dollars, I'm with you, Wayne. Uh, yeah, it, but I mean, it looks like many thousands of dollars in this in this document here. But like you say, if you're just talking eight thousand dollars, I mean, that's. Mr. Chair, I believe in number four, it does state that, and then at the very end, a summary statement in this document that the chair provided says they're just requesting fifty thousand go to fifty-eight. And again, we, we just peep. I think if you add those numbers, you'll come up with an amount around forty. And I just did the the round numbers. I come up with uh, forty-eight thousand dollars. Uh, so, the captain said, if we add eight thousand dollars to the fifty, we'll have fifty-eight thousand, and we can fund these things that's in here. Okay, we okay?
okay with that? Well, I'm still mixed up a little on these numbers, Jeff. When you read them, it looks like thousands of dollars here. Right. I, I can't quite you figure out how You can't that. find part of those things in there. You're not going to find them all. It's obvious that they are huge dollar amounts in each one, six, seven, eight, and it doesn't come up to $58,000. I don't know what Jeff did. I think he was assuming that, it, you know, if we go for 50 to 58, you'll take and spend on all the things that I think he's going to rank them probably as what he wants first, second, third, fourth down the list, but he certainly can't buy everything on that page for $58,000, yeah. obviously. Well, what I did is there is anything coming out of the General Assembly as far as the Governor's Crime Commission or anything else that extra monies that you know of at this time? Other than the uh, Governor's Crime Commission grant, we always get that, and so we can pretty much uh, know that we get that. I don't know of any additional funds other than some hopeful opportunities that there'd be some monies to purchase some things. How much, how much is that governor's grant? Uh, it's 20, is it 25,000? I think it's 25,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go with the 8,000. I'm, I'm, I'm still, when I, I, when I add all this stuff, I, I can't make the numbers work. Uh, you can't. It won't work. But if you're if you're just asking sheriff in these two paragraphs that Mark quoted in number four and then the summary paragraph, if he wants to go from fifty to fifty eight thousand, I can go along with that too. That gives you eight more thousand dollars to pick and choose which one of these items. I would rather, if I'm looking at out no, number one and number two, I'd rather you have whatever he can buy with fifty eight thousand dollars. I know you want the attorneys, but I'd rather see you have the best. And, and use the monies as far as you can make fifty-eight thousand. However far you can make fifty-eight thousand dollars go, that's what, I'm all that's right what with you that. do. Yeah, and, and the way I, I did a quick addition, and I started with number six, and six thousand, four thousand, three thousand, fourteen thousand, thirteen thousand, five thousand, three thousand, and that's all I really see here. Uh, then on number eleven, uh, five thousand, and then it comes up. I, I've got forty-eight thousand dollars for I what he's listed. I can't make the numbers work, Steve. But <laughs> I wish he was here. We could. But I'm with that. you if you can make it work. But I, I can't make those numbers work. Of course, the original request for 130,000 is not on this page. You can't no. see it. So the numbers do not. They don't jive up. I mean, no. they just they just don't. No. But if if he felt like that he could get by with the 58, Mr. Chairman, I'm okay with the 58. I, From 50 I to 58, likewise, I am too. Then, then they can pick and choose what they want to uh, supply. It, it won't be your fault. It's our fault. For all we're asking for is eight thousand more dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go with that on, on item number two. Item number three. Uh, uh, who who else? I mean, I'm presuming Taser is a name brand item, or is a oh, name brand, a company. They've become a monopoly, quite honestly. Uh, I mean, you know, if they're not going to back their stuff, uh, I guess my first question is, is there anybody else to, to go to that, uh, that's going to back their, their product? I just think they're the premier uh, organization that, that does the Tasers and the cameras. That, what we love is not having to have servers set up where all that information goes into a server. Then you've got somebody that's constantly having to pull out information from district attorney's office and defense attorneys on discovery when we ask for indictments. They, all of that's done through their server, uh, and you give them a code, and they go in per that code, and they can get what they need. We don't have to do anything. So if I understand this, the, the item number two kind of maintains the taser operation we're running on, and if if we chose to do something different, it would be item number three. Is that the way I'm uh, yes. understanding that? Yes. Yeah, item number two is something that if you're not going to consider three, we still need the tasers. If you went for the item number three, we wouldn't need any additional tasers. We're getting all brand a hundred of brand new tasers. Okay. Well, I think that's the easy answer there. Anybody want to buy a million dollars worth of tasers? I would like to make a comment. Uh, okay. Taser owns law enforcement. There's no doubt about it. They tell you what to do and what not to do because they are, they've been around since day one. And they don't, <laughs> they could care less what you said to them. 
What I'd like to do, Sheriff, if you want to go to a core plus plan, I think you, we need to put four or five people to sit down and figure out a way, a program of how we can start saving for the program. So if we can't get it now, if we want to look at it, you know, in 12 months in the, in the budget for next year, let's sit down with some kind of plan to see where we can find monies or how we can um, cut something here or add something there. But if I, I see the benefits, unfortunately, like I said, Taser owns us, but if we're, everything changes and I understand that just like you know I understand that. So I don't know that Core Plus is the great program. That's the reason we need to sit down. You're going, you're going to have to convince somebody if you allow one of us to sit on your committee. Well, we'd love it. Uh, convince us that the Core Plus, somebody from Taser is going to have to convince me this is the premier, what it's worth. I don't like two and a half year shelf life on a whole lot of anything. You know, five years is really, I understand the vest. Here's, here's, a, here's the thing, and banks are talking about five year vest. When y'all got through with your five year vest, you gave them to the Department of Correction and I wore it. You know, so I got the hand me now. So as long as the Kevlar, you know, can still still stop anything. I mean the rest of it, you know, sweaty and torn when sometimes you have to sew it up. That that's you know, and I understand taking them on and off, we all know that occurs wear and tear and everything on, on those. But let's sit down, Sheriff, if it's okay with you. Put together somebody. Let's look at this program. Let them convince us this is the program that we need to have, and let's figure out how we can do it. How about that? Sounds good. And I think Captain Anderson was the one. You spoke with him last time. I'm assuming they'd be amenable to sit down with us again, right? Yes, they're willing. They offer to sit and direct the members to speak with y'all. They were just saying there's not a two and a half year shelf life on equipment. They just put this program. They just give us new equipment. That that's Johnny. Johnny said that. Johnny just doesn't like two and a half year. I don't like to buy anything that's got a two and a half year or a five year. I'm looking for a good product. If they can convince me that Core Plus is the plan yes. and the tasers will last us for, 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 for however long, that I know when you shoot them, you, you've shot it's them. It's not that we're not just yeah. this program two and a half years, they give us all complete. Yeah, okay. But we'll, we'll be in touch and, and whenever, whoever. Uh, the commission wants to be on there. We'll be glad to set up something. Whatever the chairman would like, if, if you want us on that, but pick up. Uh, that's what I'd like to see happen, Mr. Chairman. That's okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, item four, uh, Sheriff. I presume we got some of this kind of equipment now. Where, where is it? What do we do with it? How do we manage it? Sir, I, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Item four. Yeah. The uh, uh, civil unrest gear. This is just for the trailer to store and haul it. Uh, it's six thousand two hundred dollars, and uh, I, I think we feel confident we will get the uh, equipment. It's just that we've got nowhere to store it, and you really need to send officers uh, to wherever the civil unrest is because we'll be going in multiple counties. It won't be just Burke, and they'll be coming here. We just want to have a trailer that all of its own, and and we we go immediately to wherever the civil unrest is. You can't wait on those. You gotta go, obviously, when when people's tearing the, the streets up and uh, shooting and tearing up uh, things. So what, where's our trailer stored? The one with the, like the command center, the, that big fancy trailer that maybe five, six years ago. It's at the landfill, isn't it? Yeah, that one's at the landfill. Under shelter? No, I don't, has it got a shelter out there? It is, okay. What about the gear that we have now? Do, do we have this kind of gear now in SWAT? And Mike, you might want to address SWAT and how that works. We, we don't have any of the civil uh, unrest gear in the shield, the batons, the gas mask, the helmets, or uh, for any some type of uh, civil unrest device. We, we don't have any of that. I think right now, I think the city has a few sets that are really what you're thinking on. And the difficulty is the officers can't store it in their cars. Then if it's an officer and they're gone, that, that equipment's gone. So we want to have a central location, and it may not be 
uh, personally fit to everybody, every single deputy, but they will, we would have all of that gear going. And the deputies that can come, they would suit up. Uh, and, and we just, when you try to give it to a deputy and you, they cram it into the back of the car, sooner or later, they can't find it. And uh, it's just hard to keep up with it. So we just have one location. We'll always have it. How many mutual aid calls have you gone on last year? Mutual aid calls assisting For civil unrest. Uh, well, uh, if you want to consider like Watauga, we were there. Um, went to Morganton, uh, so we've we've done two uh, in the past year. Yep, you guys were there. Are you asking for civil unrest? Yes, sir. I, I was at no, not mutual. Uh, I call that mutual aid. Also, if you're called out for a civil. I, Civil unrest. I know that there have been some sheriff's offices across the state that have asked, is there any sheriff's offices that have offices of training equipped to come? Mm -hmm. we, we couldn't answer that call because we did not have office of training equipped. If we did, we would like to go ahead. So that is for civil unrest? Yes. Okay, because there is specific training for that? There is. Okay, and so we don't have any officers trained now. The, there is training available. There's free training. The problem is you've got to have equipment to go to that. Okay. Once we so, get the equipment, we can send officers. The okay. idea is to get how many officers we can get equipped, send them training, store that equipment on the trailer, and then if whoever calls, sure, we need X amount of deputies, then nobody's at their house or calls or trying to find that equipment. It's in that trailer stored, locked up. We can just hook it up to a vehicle and haul it down there. Okay. Good idea. Mutual aid might not be a great name, but that's what the way I look at it. We're, we're providing aid to another agency. Do we get paid when we go there? Do, 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 does, do they? It's all for freebie. Well, and one thing, and probably be better to think of this way: How many requests for um, civil unrest? And we have had quite a few of those. Uh, Gaston County has been out, they've been helping a lot of different people. They've got a county-wide civil unrest team, and they, they've had multiple uh, civil unrest instances that they have responded to, and, and they would come. Uh, but we, those requests have been fairly often, but we just, we just don't go because we don't have the officers or the equipment. Does the state have an agency with anything like that? Do you know banks that the state's got involved? The, you know, I, I know the Highway Patrol has teams that they take with them. Um, I, that's the only state agency I know. At least the prison, I, I think they have a team that goes. The National Guard have people trained. They go. Um, that, that's all the big agencies that I'm aware of that would have those. So we, we just haven't gone because we don't have People and we don't have equipment. We don't have the equipment. And the training is a big thing. Okay. You can't just suit people up and say, go yeah. stand, hold this line, and they've not had any training. Tra training is a big part of it. Now, one thing is if we go and we use gas, and everybody, the idea would be everybody would have their own gas, the hosting agency would replace that the cost of that gas. Okay. If we use that or any impact munitions that we would use. And what the agencies that's been having the issues, and it's, it's primarily the urban areas, that their people are worn out and they're begging for help from other people. You know, they can go stay eight or 12 hours, and, and but they're, they're worn out. So that's when you start getting requests, can anybody come help our officers? And so we want to be able to do that. Another thing with the all 100 sheriff's offices, the goal is to be trained alike. The goal is that anybody that shows up, whoever's uh, running instant command, well, no, they're all been trained alike, and that's through the national, I mean, the uh, uh, FEMA. FEMA does yeah. the training. So everybody's going to go to that FEMA training, so you'll be trained exactly alike. All right. Thoughts on this item? Well, let me jump in here one more time, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. Are we not getting the cart before the horse here? If, uh, why are we buying the trailer now and we don't have the people or the equipment? Pardon me? 
are we not getting the cart before the horse here? I, we don't have the people and we don't have the equipment, so why buy a trailer now? We want to get the equipment to get people trained and then what? Well, I think even if you get the equipment, you got to have some more storage. Okay. Our sheriff's office, we don't have a lot of space for equipment like that, really. And, and yeah, we'll take, we're, we're assuming that we're going to get that Governor's Crime Commission money for the equipment. No, that's an assumption. Want to go with the six two hundred dollars based on uh, awarding of the money for the equipment? Yeah. Can you buy that? Uh, hang on one second. I'm looking at item four, and then I know item five sitting right behind it. Uh -uh. I just have mixed emotions. I understand helping each other when we can. I'm going I'm to have to think about this one, Jeff, for just a few minutes after we look at item number five. I understand what we're trying to do here. I just think if we have a $6,200 piece of equipment sitting out there and then we're not utilizing it, not saying that we won't utilize it, I hope we wouldn't have to, you know. That's that's one good thing. I hope you wouldn't have to go to any civil unrest, but we can't. We don't under, We can't do any predictions about the future and what's going to happen anywhere. Even though we live in great communities and everything, and I know the uh, the Charlottes and places like that may call us to come help out, and uh, because they have civil unrest on occasions, and and we don't. There wouldn't be that many times we would call. So. Do we want to spend sixty-two hundred dollars to buy a trailer that may not be used? It, it's just a balancing act of the other requests that are sitting here on the next page versus, you know, the use of money. Kind of tough. And, and one thing, I, I, when we had the instant mortgage and they they called for help, uh, I did reach out to three neighboring counties uh, that have civil unrest teams, and they were on standby. So that, that makes you feel good that you know. They're coming. They're, they're waiting. And some of it was a shift change, and they said, we're just we're keeping them here. Uh, just let us know if you got to have them. Mr. Chairman, might I just give out to the board that um, if they get their equipment later on in the year, that you could come back and we could take $6,200 out of fund balance at that time when it's obvious that they have got the equipment instead of doing it and not sure of it at this point if, if that's something the board wants to consider all right thank you mr manager all right let's look on at item number five and i think i've got the same math problem here that, that we had with that other sheet a while ago uh, well we got the guy here that can answer those questions <laughs> for number five <laughs> i don't i don't see how quite how these numbers work out for seventeen thousand five hundred dollar shortfall uh well I take that back. I, this is line by line where the other sheet was the whole page, I suppose. But, um, gentlemen, we heard the sheriff's uh, information earlier. Uh, any uh, thoughts on this page? Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may, on the very first one, there was 167.5 requested and 150 recommended on utilities, saying there was a 17.5 shortfall. Uh, how do we know there's a shortfall? How, how, where do we figure there'd be a 17? What's in the utilities? What's happening there on utilities? That yeah. we, they need the, the 167 versus the 150. Yeah, the 167 is what we actually paid out. So we assume that we won't pay out anything less the next fiscal year than we're paying out this year. Okay, Mr. Manager when we, or Margaret, when we looked at that, that was in last year's budget, was payout 167.5? No, sir. Um, the 150 is based on my estimate of what they need to cover existing bills. Um, the current budget is... Uh, 154,000 uh -huh. and we're not on target to reach that so even with some uh, rate increases I felt like 150,000 would cover we may have just done different estimating under it but 
I feel like the 150,000 in utilities would be sufficient. And if it's more, we'd, we'd pay it anyway, correct? Yes, sir. We will not cut the lights off. <laughs> now, Morganton, they're all No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's Duke. They won't cut the lights off on us. No, sir. All right, that satisfies me on number one. All right, item two. Uh, Looks like I would say most of that cost was probably fencing and versus the. I want to talk a minute, Mr. Chairman, again about padded cell repairs. Captain, how come do we have problems with padded cells? I thought we were told those things were indestructible. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. I believe that's exactly what we were told. Yes, sir. And I'm, I've got this figure in here to tell you that they told us wrong. Okay. Uh, they have been torn up uh, on four occasions already. Chewed into or what? Chewed into. Uh, actually, one has the perfect teeth print right where they took a big bite like you would an apple. Um, and I have a cell right now that is uh, damaged uh, that technically you should not use. Uh, and I have not requested a repair yet because we've already spent a pretty good chunk of money on these repairs for things that are non-warranted already. Is there some other product we could use uh, that might be more sustainable? Uh, I'm, I'm certainly looking into that. I have uh, went down to the former facility. It is a entirely different material. It's almost a Cadora type material. Um, unfortunately, that manufacturer is, is no longer in business. Um, we were told that this was indestructible. And we were told that if they were tamper-proof, uh, the sprinkler heads would not come off either. So I could, I could share a lot of things that we were told, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we, were, we, we were all standing there. When, <laughs> when well, do we said, need to go back to the, the providers and say, look, this stuff, you know, you need to... You know, so we have no warranty on this right now. Is that right, Greg? Uh, that all the warranties on this building have come and gone. And okay, all right. But, uh, well, I, I'm, you know, I, I realize the product and warranty, but you know, who? Well, we shared those. I mean, you talk to any jail administrator, they're going to say you cannot put a tamper proof anything in there. And uh, well, they actually tore a metal drain out of the cement floor. Yeah, there, there's a without going too graphic, a padded cell has one item in it. It's a hole in the middle of the ground, basically, with rebar over it. And uh, they actually were able to tear the rebar out of the floor. Um, found that it was improperly secured to begin with, and, and they fixed that. Um, but we have a continuous problem with uh, inmates destroying this, this padded cell. And it's quite a, uh, a complex procedure to repair. We end up losing the cell for about a week. That's once they get here to repair and the company comes out of Florida. I suppose there's nothing more we can do to the to the guests to keep them from tearing that up. That's correct. And the problem is, and if you look on our Facebook page and see the people we're arresting over and over and over, we arrest one guy 16 times in a year. We just arrested a guy a third time for trafficking in uh, fentanyl. Uh, they, they continue to get out. Uh, so these little charges for damage to the property is, it, it's not going to go anywhere. Now they have made the uh, indestructible sprinkler systems felonies, right? That's correct. Any, any of the safety or security uh, systems in the jail is now a felony charge. And, and just uh, so that uh, the board knows, uh, we do uh, attach charges uh, for the damages once I can get an estimate, uh, but it's going to be adjudicated as a civil judgment, and we all know how that's going to end up. But I, I assure you we attach charges to every one that, that I can prove that damaged it. And Margaret has also helped us. We talked about, when we built a jail, putting covers over those sprinklers. Uh, and we're going to try to do that. Margaret's trying to work with us on how to get that done with the existing money, but we're going to have to put sprinkler 
I mean the covers over those sprinklers. They're ripping them out. So in in this item, I think uh, again the way I would interpret this uh, with the seventy five thousand recommended uh, these items that, that you know you you your guys have went through and determined. You know, here's what we think we've got to have, and, and there's an 85,000 sh uh, shortfall, and here are some of the items that make up the 85,000. Is that the way I, I should interpret this? That's correct. If I, if I may, uh, from the previous meeting we had, uh, there's some items that are mentioned in there, fencing, parking lot additions. Uh, I believe my understanding was we were going to see if we have some funds that are coming forth and, and maybe be able to use those. Uh, is that correct, Mark? Yes, sir. Um, uh, Tuesday, uh, after you have left, Chair, um, one of the things we talked about is anything within the budget that we are looking at the American Rescue Plan funds for. And we, in reading the initial interpretation, we're very hopeful that that fencing will qualify because it will create a social barrier and distance, um, and that looks like it's going to be allowable. So we do believe the fencing that you requested of 32700 uh, may very well fall under that funding, um, which is very similar to the thirty-three thousand five hundred you're requesting that increase. Well, with that said, I, I took all of those things and removed those numbers, and the balance that you have there is to uh, compensate for the padded cell repairs and a, the ability to do a decontamination in the jail or the bus or the large vans, whatever it may be, if we get a, an exposure like we did with the, one of the sheriff's office cars. So that out that thirty three five that decontam decontamination and it's just numbers on paper until you'd ever have to do it, correct? That is correct. Okay. But here I want to go back to that flipping cell, okay? If we're gonna put the same thing back on it, right? The padding? Well at this point that that that's our option, yes sir. And we're in our fourth edition of that, so but if I may, if, if we don't do that until we can find a, a another solution, then we don't have yeah. a padded cell and the ability to do what Jill Sanders says we have to do with certain inmates for suicidal, self-harm, whatever it may be. Well, I would just encourage us to keep looking elsewhere for some other product if, if, that's, if there's something else out there. I mean, you know, maybe some other jail's got something different. I don't know. But obviously, if they're tearing it up, that easy unless maybe should be something better anyway um, what about the other items gentlemen any discussion on on these um, two radios in item six or are we saying those radios are six thousand dollars a piece plus yes mr. chairman can we chat about that a little bit if I remember right we've got special radios for detention staff to use within the facility that operate properly and I was thinking that we had at least one Viper radio in the command module that if a detention officer had problems, then the person in the command module can use the Viper radio to call for outside help. Um, I had more Viper radios down there we did not see a justification for. I mean, it's do what you want to, but that we just, you know, we're, we're trying to deal with a big piece of pie and these, these are small things, but after a while they start adding up. Sheriff, do we have any means in the control room to, when the communications are down, do we have what means would a Viper radio get us out of there? Uh, well, let Greg address that. Uh, the short answer to that is yes, there were boosters placed, uh, and I appreciate uh, Margaret and folks working with us. We were able to come in, but now again, we got to remember that we're talking about two different radio systems, uh, as indicated in um, uh, the uh, line five. Uh, 
Uh, that's talking about an internal radio that allows us to communicate and do internal jail operations. Um, the next line is talking about the, the Viper radio that communicates with the, the rest of the world, all the, the cavalry that's coming. Um, we, we need those radios in more than one location because booking may not have any clue as to what the master control tower is seeing or observing or is unable to do. Uh, and especially when we lose, uh, as of Monday, we lost all phone operations. Uh, cell phones do not work on the housing side. For an obvious reason, we don't want, not that we would ever have it, I hope we wouldn't, but a, a bad officer bring a cell phone in and try to pass it. So intentionally we blocked cell phone usage on that side, so that's not an option. Uh, so they are two different radios for two different purposes. So we've got a Viper radio in the control room? Uh, we do not. I don't have one put there. The, the Viper radio that was referenced, uh, that was that was bought for the, the captain of the jail. I, I didn't have a radio when, when I moved in there. And again, these things were determined initially, uh, uh, as I recall, by IT and uh, uh, some other principals that were involved in, and they concluded what radios we needed and why we went with these two different styles. I, I did not initially want two different versions. I wanted one radio, the same one that I was familiar with on the road, the Viper, so I knew I could do internal or external, and then we we ultimately ended up with the two systems. But we do have internally mechanisms to support both the Viper with boosters and the the, the uh, 3000 series with, with boosters. So would another Viper in the control room be a solution? I'll take it. Um, um, two, uh, we need one dedicated to the control room and one dedicated to booking. That, 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 that's what the request represents. So the two Vipers are 13.5. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Jeff, I probably could live with the two Vipers and not those under item number five for the internal usage. I, I see more advantage to having Vipers than for right now. I'm not saying that they're not needed, but I think for, for the immediacy and to for the current budget that we have, uh, of course, Captain said he could live with one. I, I don't. So do you have communication between the control room and booking when when communications are out? Oh, we do not. We use a runner. Other than our internal radio, that now I, I stand corrected, we do. Uh, the small radio is not impacted by uh, anything that's supported by fiber optic or any of that stuff. So we, we still, it's basically a line of sight. Think about your Motorola will talk about that you go buy at Walmart basically. Again, it's a better radio than that. I don't want those. Uh, so, uh, uh, but I'm giving that as a comparison. I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to just get in my mind, if you had an incident, you had something going on, communications were all out, your front end can talk to your back end on your internal radio. On the internal, that's correct. And so at least, you know, we need to be able to get out of there somewhere, somehow. That's correct. And that's where there's two Vipers again would support that piece of it. Uh, no different than if if uh, we we lose all that VoIP phone system and everything else at least that Viper radio will allow the jail to call the road and say we've got a critical incident I need some help instead of going through trying to get somebody to go outside with a cell phone and call the 911 center. And I presume they can communicate with 911 also. Pardon? Yes absolutely. Just like they do in our patrol cars and, that, and what our deputies carry as a handheld unit. It's the identical radio. Okay, let me back up. I, I can live with one Viper then. Now that you've explained about the internal radios. Okay. All right, any other discussions on this page? So we're, we're to a radio. Everybody good with that? Anything else you want to talk about? All right, let's let's go with the radio uh, on this item. All right, any other discussion on this from the board? All right, thank you, Chair. Thank you.
gentlemen. This brings us to item number three, discussions of the budget in general. Uh, and I will apologize for my having to leave early on Tuesday. And so I haven't had a chance to get back with anybody to, to see if some of the items that, that I had just some question about not, maybe has already been discussed. Uh, let me first ask uh, uh, either of you fellows have any items that, that you want to discuss at this time. Mr. Chairman, I do. For, somewhere yesterday I kind of uh, missed something when we, when we were talking about Vedic. I expected the Vedic to be up in the donation line item because I thought Vedic was a donation and that somehow it, it came under it was listed in economic development and I missed it. And I know we had been uh, offering $25,000 to Vedic. Uh, I think we're at a point with Vedic that we we don't need to give them $25,000. I, I would like to recommend that we that we give them $5,000. I know the manager recommended zero, but I'd like to recommend that we give them $5,000 and stay in the Vedic program. But I think their, their balances through USDA and the other associations that they're in, the, the money that comes out, they do provide a service in economic development, but I would rather see them go back to the donation line item instead of showing up under economic development. I don't want anybody to think that they're part of our economic development program, which they are not. They're a separate entity in themselves. So I, I would like to recommend that for consideration. And you sit on that board, I believe, is that correct? Scott and I both do, but I am of the opinion that if we go from 25 down to 5, that I may just turn in my resignation since we would not be top dog in money anymore. Uh, we, are, we are giving, we were giving uh, along with uh, Valdez. Valdez was given 25,000 and uh, the county was given 25,000. Morganton was giving 10, I believe, and then it went, every every municipality in this county was giving some type of money to Vatic. everybody. There was 100% participation in that. So, but if we go down, uh, since we're not giving that kind of money, one of us probably needs to come off of that board. The, the beneficiaries, are they uh, countywide? Yes. Yeah, they, there has been there has been some good work. I, I would never say that there's that the, there's a lot of people has benefited from that loan program at Vedic, and and some of those businesses are still in business downtown because they were they were given uh, um, a loan. And if people don't understand Vedic, there are a number of people that cannot go to a bank, and it's because the bank don't want to lend a small amount of money. They want them to borrow millions and you know these people don't need millions of dollars they just need small amounts to keep them going and keep them in business and uh, so that's what Vedic is there for to uh, take take these applications and they go through a, a loan review committee eight people of diversified backgrounds on the loan review committee review those loans and the credits that are associated with the people that are asking for the loans and they determine uh, a recommendation and they bring that recommendation to the full uh, vetting board and ask them to either approve or disapprove. Uh, I Mr. Chair, a, yes. may I ask a question? I, I'm, it's very easy to move that to the outside agency. It just always been in your economic development section historically. Vedic has. There's two other agencies in there that are not part of your typical economic development program. And I just want to ask while I've got you, I'm happy to move them as well if you would like. That's the two airports. We, you do a contribution to Foothills and a contribution to uh, the Hickory Airport. Um, both yeah. worthwhile and, and probably somewhere in the past the thought process was they do bring business in is why they were put in that section. Do you okay. want them moved as well? I, I would probably say yes, because most of the, these were traditionally not a budget line item. 
it was just a request for a donation. When Vedic started, the original request was from the town manager to the county manager for a one-time shot of 25, or was, actually, was it 25 to start with? For a one-time, one-time shot of $25,000 donation. So I, these are actually donations. I don't want to get tied down for somebody thinking they are, they are part of our economic development. It is the Valdez Economic Development Incorporated something, I can't remember, Incorporation. So uh, I, I, it was, I always felt like it was a donation that we were making to support their, their mission. And, but right now, because everybody wasn't in it, currently there is 100% participation by all the municipalities and the county itself. When you, well, I, I'm, I'm just happy that uh, we're able to continue our pay plan. That means a lot to the 285 employees this year. A lot of times you, you talk, we talk about things like this and you get into it a couple of years and it becomes a budget problem, but we, we've been able to uh, keep that up. And at 285 employees this year, that really, to me, that means a lot to our county and, and to our employees. And that shows that we really care. And we got some good employees. Yeah. No comment. I'm I'm pretty comfortable with the with the budget with what we went on today. I'm pretty. I I know we have people that say, well, it's grown and grown and grown, but that's life. Every everything is uh, my business. It's costing more to operate. I mean, it, it's just that's that's a way of life. It, it's. It, your, your budget's never going to stay the same, I mean, it, or, or you're going to go so far behind that it'll take forever to catch up, and that's what happened years ago to Burke County. We got so far behind, and, and that's why, like, maintenance of buildings and different things like that were put aside, but we're on the, we're on the right track. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, people might not understand why we put more money into, in, into the county things, but... I mean, it, it, we, we've got a lot to take care of in the county. Okay. Thank you, Wayne. Mr. Chairman, I want to ask Margaret, too. Insurance and retirement. Which, how much did retirement go up, contribution? 1.25%. Per, 1.25%. One, how about, I saw some insurances were down, and, and I apologize, I didn't write some. That's okay. <laughs> I saw from last year's budget, the insurance money went down. Is that because of loss of personnel, or was there some adjustment? No, sir. We were able to reduce the premium amount that the county puts into our self-funded plan and also reduce the contributions by those that have their dependents on our plan this year. Um, amazingly enough, we have had a good enough history and we have enough reserve that we felt like it was important to pass that savings on to our staff and to ourselves within the departments we will still it was a conservative amount we reduced the premiums $35 a month per employee from the counties what they put in and then the uh, plans depended the reduction depended on which you were under whether it was full children family spouse only child only uh, plan but all of those we were able to reduce the premiums this year Mr. Manager, do you think the clinic is uh, still uh, worthwhile and it has reduced the cost of some health care problems? I think it is either reduced or at least on a break-even basis. Um, it is a great um, tool for us in recruitment. I don't know if you remember Steve Bennett. He had three children, and he talked to me one time about that and told me, he said, Brian, before y'all did that, and I'd take all three of my kids because they'd all three be sick with the same thing, Go pay for that child, go pay for that child, go pay for that child. When he go to the employee clinic, there's no copay. That saved him a bunch of money. Mr. Manager, I still have some issues. I have some concerns about capital projects in the future. Do you have, what is your thought process as far as, when we look at that uh, DSS building over there, it's uh, just, cringe every time we walk through that thing and I say how are we going to address some of those capital as Wayne said we got to keep these buildings going well didn't we just put that big chiller in this year or, or last year there, there's money I think for the continuation of the HVAC there and I don't know if that can also be some federal funds 
I don't know if that'll work, but Margaret doesn't seem to think so. But uh, again, we are looking to try to use those federal funds once we get the final rules as to what they can be used on. And if we put it in there now, then they would disallow our ability to use that. And I don't know if, if that's really addressing the question or if there's some other things about capital needs. Uh, I know we're looking at a bunch of roofs and some other building needs in, in what we've got approved. We're still trying to set aside money so that we can for these purposes. At this time, we're really not setting aside funds for long-term capital. It is definitely a goal, and it's one of the outcomes we hope to see from our facility and needs study, that when that company, we have a, a interview Tuesday set up for the um, committee that's overseeing that to meet with the high-ranking uh, RFQ respondent we have, hopefully we'll be able to hire them and get them started on helping us create a plan for the future uh, to where we can say this building we need to start really rolling funds into, we need to start setting aside. They'll come up with our plan and help us see how much we need to be setting aside annually. Uh, but right now we are not setting aside funds for future building needs of that size. I hope that can be a focus for us in the future is to do that. Uh, in the law enforcement arena, I absolutely understand that it, it's expensive and it's going to get more. Uh, we definitely need to put a focus on how we intend to, it, especially for equipment and things that, that uh, are going away, the, the future I think we'll see in law enforcement, there'll be, there'll be new types of weapons. To, uh, we don't, we don't train like we should train. I know, of course we always, we, we never get enough training. So, I, and there's no way to prepare for the unknown, but I hope again that there's a way that we might be able to set aside maybe in a fund for law enforcement so that we won't have to go through and it'll come to the day to where we won't have to say no. You know, I'd like, like to say, I know there's some wants and there's some needs and we all want some things, but I think that it's been very, the sheriff and his staff have been very frugal in their ask, and I would have been doing the same thing, standing up there asking for everything that you asked for, knowing that I wasn't gonna get everything, but I was sure would have been asking. It'd have been not much of a manager if you hadn't been doing that. So I'm, Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased with right now with the budget, the way it is. I'm, I'm just, I think we're where we need to be, not where I'd like for us, I'd like to do more, than that, but knowing we can't, so I think we, we, we've done everything that we can do. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Johnny. I've got several items that, that I'd like to, to just run through, if you'll bear with me, uh, and also say at this point, before I forget, uh, Margaret and, and um, perhaps Kay, uh, maybe in the next month or two, I'd like to get a report to the board on our status of the, uh, the HVAC and particularly at the uh, Human Resource Building that, that we've been trying to get worked on for quite some time. If we could get a status on that project and then also a status from HR and the, and the jail on how, how we're coming along with the uh, uh, four pronged fork we started out with now several months ago. I'd like to kind of get a progress report on, on that as well and see where we are. I don't know if we've gotten how deep down that trail we've got, but I, I think uh, the board would like to hear where we are and, and what's happening with that. I won't, I won't have you go there today. We need to keep moving on the budget. But if you've got your budget, if you Mr. Turn Chairman, it. I'm sorry, is that just like a report or a presentation? Paper, paper report in your report section or presentation? No, I think maybe a, maybe a presentation at pre agenda it may not be something we want to move to, a, to the uh, you know, a full agenda, but uh, I'd just like to know where we are with those two projects. Got it. You good with that, Margaret? Yes, sir. Um, we'll get with uh, Mr. Delahunt. He's been overseeing the, the HRC. I know the first phase is in process. I don't know exactly how far, and the second phase that they brought the proposals on is budgeted in the next fiscal year. I can tell you that much on that one, but he would have to he would know more about the, exactly where they are with it. And the new employee only started last Monday, so he's not even been with us two, few weeks on the recruitment part, but uh, hopefully if he comes and 
another week or so, he can give you a better update on where he's at. Okay, thank you. Mr. Yes. Chairman, can I just mention, uh, I saw an email from Mark a day or two ago that said the parts for the first phase of the HRC building won't be here until after July 1st. Uh, they're running into delays in getting that. And I think he shared that, Margaret, with you in case we needed to roll monies from this budget year to next to cover that. Okay, thank you. Well, at least at least parts is a, is a move forward. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, did you say for June or July's meeting those reports? I'm good with either one. If, if July is better for the progress, then that's fine. Okay. Uh, June is probably not the best time right now, the way it looks. If we turn to page 13, uh, I'm just going to hit on a couple of items that I made note of as I, I went through the budget. And if you discussed these yesterday, please say so, and I, I'm, I'm, I'll hush. Uh, under the cooperative extension, uh, for a number of years, they have requested uh, uh, some equipment and vehicle. Uh, Mr. Manager, Margaret, can you help me with, with zeros there? Uh, is... Do we not need to address a vehicle at that location, or have they done something else, or are we doing something else? Or? We did speak with Spring on that. Um, one concern was where they would be on enrollment in the coming year, um, and the the ability to take care of it. The equipment is the first year, but the vehicle is a multi-year request. You're correct on that one, and we were hoping to pass that another year, and hopefully by then we'll know more about because when we're doing the budget, of course, the restrictions hadn't been released and we didn't feel like they would have an ability to utilize that vehicle this summer. And it would be next summer before they had their programs back in full swing, but it does appear they're gonna be able to get them in swing a little bit sooner. Um, we had worked on getting them a surplus vehicle last year to use and um, when it was the week it was being transferred, the engine was blown and they did not receive that surplus vehicle that we had hoped to give them last year. But of course, last year it didn't matter because they had to suspend all programming. So is there anything possible that we might have that could, we could make available to them if they have some needs uh, in the meantime? I'm trying to think of anybody surplus in a van, a passenger van. The only van that's been surplused was transferred to this year to, in fact, this week, to general services to utilize for um, a van they requested for their HVAC techs. It's an equipment type van. Um, so we did get them one instead of selling it for surplus, we transferred it. I don't know of another passenger van that would be available in the coming year for them, no. Would leasing a vehicle be a possibility if they had some program that they needed to lease a vehicle for a week or something, would that be a? That is what we've recommended to them as an option, that for that one week you need it, just go ahead and rent one with budget or someone else and, and set that up. They have worked also with a couple of the churches that have larger vehicles in the past and been able to utilize those to make sure they had uh, someone to transport them. Okay, thank you, Margaret. I think in talking with the manager, y'all had some discussion about the manager's salary blind yesterday, is that correct? But, okay. Uh, uh, we've already talked about Vedic. Uh, uh, Morgan, page 18, Brian. 18% uh, increase in the salaries line it looked to me like in the emergency medical services. Was there a, a something specific there that made that up? Yes, sir. That's, they have, we moved four new, we put four new, recommended four new paramedics. Uh, that had to do with the Jonas Ridge Station, station predominantly. Uh, when that was set up, it was set up that Jonas Ridge would provide a person and we would provide a person just to see how it went. Unfortunately, over the years, their uh, enrollment has declined and they don't have the qualified persons to assist within their roster anymore. So we've been ensuring that the citizens are served by sending up staff who, which then are either on overtime from another shift or trying to utilize part-time, but it's a challenge to get enough part-times there. So part of this increase is for four paramedics to fully staff that station. However, we really anticipate a decline in their overtime expense 
to cover a significant portion of those positions. This department was also in the pay study this year, the pay plan, which is roughly $280,000 of that salary increase. They were significantly off market. Okay, thank you. Uh, general services, the uh, page 20 vehicle line item uh, requested 135,000, went with 26.5. Uh, are we, do we have any discussion there? Are we, what are we thinking about vehicles? I know we had new people coming on. Sounds like we moved the van already. Uh, is that going to be sufficient? One, re the request was for four vehicles. One was for the director, one was for the assistant director, one was for the HVAC tech, and one was for the electrician. We were able to provide a vehicle for the HVAC tech that should meet their needs, he felt like. Um, we were able to provide a Ford Ranger truck that environmental health was surplusing for the director's position, and we provided one other vehicle for the uh, assistant, for the, excuse me, for the other technician. It's going to be pretty cheap vehicles, aren't they? Twenty-six five. I believe it's a Ford Ranger truck that they wanted. No, I'm sorry. That's an economy van. That's the Econoline van. I thought I heard two or three vehicles there. The others were surplus that we're transferring in instead of selling. Our sale of surplus is going to be a little bit down in revenue this year because we're trying those vehicles that are still good enough to stay on the road. We're shifting from one department to another. We'll still sell the others, but they're not, they're not good. Okay, I just, Mr. Chairman, stop for just a moment. While you're talking about vehicles, what about the ones we got on Gulf deals, all, all the old sheriff's office vehicles? How many do we have out there to still sell and get rid of? We have approximately 20 that the sheriff's office is surplusing. Uh, we are waiting to receive the uh, paperwork and keys on those. They have been identified during the past few months by the sheriff's office, and we had uh, we are trying to get the seals off, uh, and we'll be having them. They probably won't go up to sale until the new fiscal year, but we will get them up for sale. But we, it's just a process. And where do you put that money when it comes in? Sale of fixed assets. Okay. It's a revenue for the countywide revenue. Okay. Page 24 under the uh, Information Technologies budget, uh, M&R software, uh, line item uh, $630,000. Can you help me there? What what all that is? Is that uh, how, necess how, how necessary is all that $630,000? I guess where I'm headed. Yes, sir. We may have to call on Director Black in the back office for some of it. Uh, a portion of that we've determined li during this year when we had a failure in our phone system that it was not under a maintenance agreement. I know a piece of that is to make sure that our phones are under a maintenance agreement so we don't have a, another challenge with it. The one that was mentioned this week, earlier this week, actually came from a dump truck taking out a line and shutting down half the city. It wasn't with our system itself. There is also additional uh, firewall software and remote access. How am I doing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the, uh, the phone equipment is uh, the equipment that interfaces with our at and service. Uh, it's end of life, end of support. So it needs to be replaced. That's one of the main things there. Um, the other is just the general maintenance and software licensing for all our servers and, and hardware and equipment and things like that, just to keep it just to keep it under support and make sure that when it breaks, we can get it fixed and as quickly as possible. Now the taser, I, I just uh, these all these companies that say this is end of life when we all know this is not end of life, and yeah. uh, you know I know it, it makes it difficult to uh, you know how much risk. Do, do, you, do we want to take? Do you want to take? Uh, I, you know, I think from my perspective, I just encourage you to, uh, Mr. Manager, Margaret, you know, and department heads to, to 
and try to go as far with this as reasonable. Uh, right. I, I know it's just real easy for these manufacturers to say, well, we need you to replace this every two years. And yep. uh, we all know that most of that stuff is lasts more than two years. But yeah, the phone system, we felt that was pretty important. That's We've had you know several outages this year. That's part of the hardware that's related with, to those outages. So that's why. And it, it is, it's been, I think, eight years. So it's, it's really pushing end of life on that. Yeah. All right. Let me go to one other while Scott's there, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott, under computer equipment, we spent uh, last year's budget almost a half a million dollars, and, and I mean, uh, here we are down to like $98,000. Are we going to see the big one next year? We shouldn't see a, a big one for a number of years. So um, that was the two, we kind of split it over two years to get the, uh, what we call the Hyperflex infrastructure that all our servers run on. Okay. Um, so we've got that in, we're getting that all in place and deployed now. Um, so we're what we anticipate doing is that there'll be a small upgrade to components of that that we can kind of rotate out over a, over a life cycle okay. and do that and, and hopefully not have a large forklift replacement. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Uh, page 27, uh, recreation uh, equipment. Equipment line 27 nine we give a zero there. Uh, how do we stand with that? What what are we talking about there? The twenty seven thousand that was requested is that uh -huh. the line you're on? Yes, ma'am. It is for a piece of equipment to work on the Bonnefour Trail and possibly use at other parks. It is a. should be more familiar with these being it's what my son-in-law does for a living but I believe it's called a bulldozer I'm trying to find the scanned piece of it while you're looking at that mr. manager are we going to have recreation continue to take care of that trail up there is that our intent there will be some yes I mean there's the trails are still fairly new so you're you know the thinking is there's not going to be a tremendous amount of repairs but uh, but, but we still depend on recreation to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So there should be some volunteer labor there too. They they usually come with a shovel. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of them are pretty dedicated. I'll tell you if you watch watch them work. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking this was probably something to work on those trails. Though. It says it's a. Uh, open dozer blade quick coupler with a bucket well I'm, i mean i've been up there and i can tell you those those trails uh, they may be new but they're going to need they need maintenance uh, and it's uh, it's an ongoing uh, thing uh, I'd, I'd like to see us give them a little money for some equipment on on the trail was there any discussion on that yesterday? No. Did you talk to him about that piece of equipment, what he wanted to do with it? I didn't. I don't think I've had a direct call with, with Greg. It would do maintenance work on the trails, and then it it would be used some for the parks as well. So it wouldn't only be used at the, up at the trails, and it is something that he has a piece of equipment now that he can take up there and use. But it would certainly be very useful, and this is a different piece of equipment than what he currently has. Was that 27.9 all for one piece of equipment? Yes, sir. Yeah, that brings up another question on the trails. What about security or somebody uh, a crime is committed? How, do, how does the Sheriff's Department handle that? Like any other call, I would think. I mean, do they have the equipment to handle that? Banks runs in on foot, yelling all the way. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. We can meet with them in the parking area when we have calls on the trail. All right. You meet with someone at the parking lot. 
and he just come off a of patrol, so he's the one that knows. If, it, if it's something like a theft, something minor, we, we usually meet the victim at the parking lot. If it's something major, we have to access it by foot. Just to, you know, we park at the main parking area and have to the deputies have to walk on foot to wherever the crime's occurring. Okay. Uh, I'm inclined to, to support this piece of equipment. Uh, I just I feel like there's a lot of work up there, and you can't. It's not something we can do by hand. Uh, what I've seen, uh, you're going to have to have something to work on that trail. Uh, you're right. uh, any thoughts on that, or we we spent a lot of money up there to have one of the prettiest things that there is in the world, and I'd like to I'd just like to see it stay that way and. If Treg thinks that's what's necessary, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Let's, let's put this item in. Everybody okay with that? Okay. Mr. Chairman, could, could I ask Margaret to go back and Brian to go back and talk with him about this piece of equipment? And, and I want you two to be satisfied that this is probably the piece of equipment that's necessary get Shane involved and make sure this is the piece that we actually need to make sure he can get done what needs to get done. Would that be okay? We've already talked about your your items. Uh, I did have a note on the, the equipment line, the million dollars that was recommended zero. So we've had discussion on that. I, I, I think that was the taser line, if I, I suppose. That was the taser the cash. Yeah, okay. Uh, page 34, uh, tax evaluation, contracted the reappraisal cost. I know we had a lot of discussion about this earlier. And, and it may maybe I'm understanding this. Uh, did we break that over two years? Is that what we've done with that, Margaret? Okay. We came. We talked to Danny and came up with a hybrid approach where we did one of the. He had asked about five employees and a contract when he originally talked with you. And in coming back and having a couple conversations, we did one employee in house in his appraisal department, and then did a portion of the contract. And we'll do a portion of that contract to get us to the 2023 revalve so that we can have as much of that done as possible. And the hope is that all of it would be able to be accomplished by then because that's when we'll start seeing revenue from it. Okay, thank you. Page 39. Uh, this is in water and sewer. Uh, Line item M and R water and sewer system requested eight hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Recommended a hundred thousand dollars. Had to be taken to the emergency room. Thank you. That is because if we budgeted any of the projects that we are currently filling are eligible under the American Rescue Plan, they would not be eligible. It's non-supplanting funds, so we worked with Mark on taking all of those maintenance repair projects that we believe are going to be eligible out of our recommendation. Brian and I, Brian looked closely at the list with the rules we've had so far from the feds and uh, anything that promotes uh, no leakage, no sewer overage, anything that would be EPA or DEQ qualified will be eligible under the American Rescue Plan, which would be a sewer uh, substation replacement, which would be pump replacements, which would be water line replacements. All of these are supposed to be eligible under that new funding we're going to receive. Um, and we want to make sure that we don't budget them so that they will be eligible. All right. I think that's all I had. Anything else, Mr. 
Looks like it's me and you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Margaret, I don't want to be a bore, but on page one and two. But before you go, let me okay. just do one thing here, just in case there's a possibility. Um, it appears perhaps we, we've lost our quorum. There's no, no appearing about that. We have lost our quorum. Um, but I'm wondering if um, we might rattle Mr. Mulweed to see if he's anywhere in town to, that he could present himself that it doesn't seem that we would need this meeting on June 1st, but we can't cancel it without a quorum. Okay. okay. What I've got is not going to be good. It's page one, two, and three. And I, I, for whatever reason, in the, in the budget message under where expenditures on page three, it's, you're recommending 116, 202, 125. If we, it says which is six million five fifty five sixty less than the one twenty two seventy. I subtracted those, Margaret, and that didn't come out the same number. I got six million five hundred and fifty eight fifty. I just want the budget message to be right when it goes out. This one says it's five. The last three digits five sixty. When I subtracted it out, it, the last three digits were eight fifty. When you take the 122 minus the 116, I, I, I know that's a little picky, but I want, somebody will see that and say something. You're saying everything was the, except the last three digits? Yeah, it was just okay. the last three. Thank uh, you. The difference would be 6,550,850. It's just in the in, in the budget message itself. Vice Chairman Mulway needs about ten minutes, and he'll be here. Okay. Mr. Manager, you got anything you'd like to report? Not at the moment. We're, like I said, waiting to see what we can get the final rules on the federal monies and. Uh, we want to make sure we're following those rules and they don't disallow anything. So that we're again, we've had good conversations with uh, with Mark about the projects he's wanting to do and we believe need to be done. And uh, just gotta wait. Um, we did uh, have a meeting uh, yesterday with some of our judicial officials, talking to them about the possibility of something over there at the courthouse. Of course these and other things would need to be discussed with the board before we get seriously down the road with any kind of discussion about uh, developing projects to use those funds for. Sheriff, I don't suppose uh, you've been notified of getting any uh, friendly COVID money, have you? I'm not aware of any. We have talked more than about I haven't been uh, notified personally about any. Uh, Margaret and, and the county manager and I have talked about the, hopefully an opportunity to get some monies and how that would impact uh, the budget and, and how it impacted this budget about not putting it into the budget if we could give you an opportunity to get that. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to use some of that uh, to fund some things that we can't fund now. A taser would keep you from putting your hands on somebody, wouldn't it, to some degree? I'll tell you one thing, they've got gloves now. Um, some some sheriff's officers and law enforcement will be moving away from tasers to with gloves. Uh, at the sheriff's training conference uh, last month, it was pretty impressive uh, how effective these gloves are. But the difficulty is you have to be in close enough proximity to grab the person. But... Uh, I looked at them, especially for a jail setting where you are going hands-on with people. I presume that's some kind of electro. Yes. Well, one thing, if we go back just for a second, I, I, I run these numbers on item number two uh, that we talked about that they weren't adding up, and, and they do add up. Uh, Six to eleven comes up to forty-six thousand five hundred and seventy dollars, and uh, that would leave thirty-four hundred thirty dollars. And and the captain felt like that thirty-four hundred 
thirty dollars will not be sufficient to do the other things that we needed to do. So we just asked him for eight thousand dollars added to that fifty thousand to get what we, we needed to do. So I, this opportunity to clarify that. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. Ms. Margaret, anything from your end of the table? No, sir. Thank you for considering and taking the time you did to go through all these numbers. It's a lot of fun. All right. Thank you. We're going to take a 10-minute recess. Uh, can I do one thing for you guys? Yes, sir. I, I've, uh, I received a telephone call this morning from the Attorney General's office. The uh, opioid lawsuit is in the last throes of settlement, so we, we're probably going to be able to see something uh, relatively soon. I think everyone is aware Burke County is, is subject to get a, a, a good good sum of money out of the lawsuit when it is settled. Uh, that that sum of money will be, uh, there's a pretty broad brush as to what Brian can use it for or the county itself can use it for. So it's definitely for opioid abatement processes and uh, uh, everyone is, is well aware that we're still t attempting to take the old jail and turn it into a a rehabilit a long term long term rehabilitation center, so it gives us encouragement that uh, there's even monies in in Raleigh. But if we uh, get what we think we're going to get out of the lawsuit, it will it will give us an avenue that we've never seen before to to help in in the the treatment process. So that is some extremely extremely good news to hear that that's probably going to occur uh, very soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Johnny. Let me just say on behalf of Commissioner Abley, uh, he had to leave abruptly. His wife is in the emergency room. So uh, let's be, note that so you don't think he just walked away. Uh, so we'll, sounds like Commissioner Moore is close by, and uh, maybe we can get him in here, and uh, we will see if we can uh, cancel the June 1st budget meeting since it appears we've discussed everything we need to discuss. So. All right, we'll take a 10-minute recess.
Okay, we'll come back into session. At this time, we have one item left, item number four, uh, potential cancellation of June 1 budget meeting. And Mr. it appears Chairman. all of our budget questions were answered, unless, Mr. Mowick, you have any questions that uh, you wanted to address? Mr. Chairman? Yes? W would you mention that we now have a quorum back for the uh, record? Yes, and for the record, we do have a quorum. Commissioner Mowey is present along with Commissioner Carswell in Britain. So we do have a quorum now, and we will go back into session. So with that, uh, anything, Mr. Mowey? I'm good, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. With that, I'll entertain a motion to cancel the June 1st budget meeting. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to cancel the June 1st budget meeting. Thank you, Mr. Carswell. All in favor say aye. 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 That'll be it. All of us, Madam Clerk, thank you. With, uh, with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to recess to uh, June 1st. Nope, we won't do that. Nope. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk.